spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Good morning, Christ for Life Ministries. We're so happy to have you as part of our family here today, worshiping together as a body of Christ. We're excited. We're excited. It's going to be a good day. It's always a good day to worship Him. Hallelujah. All right, we're just going to open in a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful. We're thankful for another day. We're thankful for just an amazing day that we can just take to worship You and to give You all the glory and honor that's due your name. Jesus, we just want to dedicate this worship to you, God. Anything that might be bogging us down right now, any any worries, any concerns, anything that's angering us, upsetting us, God, help us to just lay it all down at your feet so we can just worship you. That's a prayer for me as well. Anything, Lord, I just want to lay it at your feet. I want to worship you freely this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive this worship. Receive this worship. Receive this worship. Hallelujah. Just give it all to you. In the precious name, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, I encourage you to just stand up on your feet. If you can't stand, just engage. Let's worship him actively this morning. Worship is not a spectator sport, so let's involve ourselves. Let's just worship. Lift up your hands, clap your hands, lift your voice with us as we worship the King of Kings. Draw me close to you. Never let me go.
you're all I've ever needed. Oh, you're all I want. Help me know you are need. Let's sing that again. You're all I want. You're all I want. You're all. Let's lift it up one more time. You're all I want. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are needed. Help me know you are near. 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 Help me. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. You're always near. You're always reaching. Thank you for leaving me never. Thank you for saving me never. You'll never do it, Jesus. You've never done it before. John chapter 8, verse 34 says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, but a son is a permanent family forever, is a part, sorry, of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free indeed. How encouraging is that? If the son sets you free, you are truly free indeed. Another verse says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses, verse 17, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so easy to get caught up in, in what's going on and how we feel and, and just get discouraged. But I encourage you this morning, Regardless of what state you're in right now, you've already won the victory because he's already won it all. On the cross, when he died, he bled out and died and he rose again. The victory was already won. So I encourage you this morning, I encourage you to walk with your head held high. I encourage you to know that you are already victorious because he has already won it all for us. Hallelujah. No bondage can keep us down. No chains can keep us down because he's broken every chain. All chains of bondage are broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I encourage you to just lift your hands and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for the freedom to worship you. Thank you for the freedom to live day to day in thanksgiving and in reverence, just completely pouring out worship to you because you are so worthy of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next song we're going to be singing is a new song for most of us, but the words just say there is no bondage. Every chain, every chain of defeat, every chain of brokenness, every chain of sin, every chain is broken in the name of Jesus. In his presence, there is freedom. So we are surely, truly free indeed. Amen. I encourage you to sing along when you catch it. Let the words minister to you this morning as we minister to the heart of God. There's no hurt that can outlive the grace you feel. 
freely give its the raging flood that covers us for the thoughts that come to decay you send love to strip them away and you left the There is no bondage. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. There is no bondage. Jesus, our hearts are open. No guilt, no shame. All my stains erased. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. Let's rejoice this morning because every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Let's sing that again. There's no hurt. There's no hurt that can outlive the grace you freely give it's the raging flood that covers us for the thoughts that come to decay you said love to strip them away and you left the truth that we're free in you. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. There is no bondage. Jesus, our hearts. Jesus, our hearts are open. No guilt. No shame. All my stains erased. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. There is no bondage. Jesus, our hearts are open. No guilt, yes, no shame. All my stains, they're erased. There is no bondage. Every chain is broken. Every chain. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Every chain, he breaks it off of us. Every chain is broken. Every chain, every chain, every chain. next part we're going to sing says in your presence there is freedom hallelujah i am free indeed in your presence there is freedom hallelujah i am free indeed i encourage you to lift your voice as we sing this and we're going to declare this right now in your presence in your presence there is freedom hallelujah i am free indeed in your presence and there is freedom hallelujah i am free sing it in your presence there is freedom hallelujah i am free indeed 
in your presence there is freedom hallelujah i am free indeed in your presence there is freedom hallelujah i am free indeed in your presence there is freedom hallelujah in your presence hallelujah 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 one more time hallelujah it's the highest praise we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah 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 oh there is no bondage every chain every chain is broken there is no bondage jesus our hearts are shame all my stains he no guilt no guilt no shame all my stains he raised no guilt no shame all my stains he raised there is no bondage ever
like you. No one else can touch my heart. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Oh, I can search for all eternity long and find there is none. There is none. Oh, there is none. And we scream it out. There is none. 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 One more time with everything we have. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Jesus. We can search the whole wide world over, and still we would never find, never find one like you, Jesus. Nobody to compare to your greatness. Nobody to compare to your love. Nobody to compare to your greatness. No one to compare to your love. No one to compare to your fantasticness <laughs> when there's no more words who you are there's none to compare there's none to compare <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah Lord there's none like you there is none like you in all the earth we just give you the glory we thank you Jesus we lift your name on high we lift your name on high there is none like you truly there is none like you Good morning, church. Welcome to today's service. Uh, just welcome again. We are still missing and praying for you. Uh, and surprise, I'm not speaking today. We actually have a very special guest who has made a message for us this morning. Uh, and he goes by the name of EJ Tupe. And I'd love to introduce you to, hi to him and his ministry. And he... Uh, he he does so much for the community of Toronto and helps with Missions Canada and just does so much evangelism, so much gospel spreading no matter where he is. So we hope you enjoy today's message. He, it is recorded at night, which is why he re refers to hello, good evening, and good night. But the word still applies today. The message of the Bible still applies no matter what time of day it is. So we hope you enjoyed today's message. May you be blessed by it. Let me just pray before we, before we start the message and we press play. Father, thank you and we love you. May whoever is watching and listening be filled with your spirit. May we have open hearts and open minds. And may you work a renewed mind within us and a new transformed life in Christ today. We are listening, Father. May any distractions not be a distraction. May our focus and our eyes be on you. Thank you for today. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy, everybody. Well, well tonight, tonight is a bit, a bit of a special, special treat, treat, not, not only because, because we get to spend time in God's Word, but we are spending time in a passage that's very dear to my heart. Not just because it's a beautiful portion of Scripture, but in my early years as a, as a young Christian, this was one of the passages that really spoke to my heart and helped me understand uh, God's grace and God's love for me. And so tonight is a 
trip down memory lane. So why don't we open in prayer and dig in. <laughs> so Father, I thank you for um, your word. Uh, Jesus, thank you for the hope you bring. And, and Lord, I ask that as we spend time in your word that we sense the power of your truth and that Jesus, I, even myself, would have a new insight about who you are and what you mean in my life. So thank you, Lord, that we can spend time in your word. May it nourish our souls in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we dig into the passage, we need to dig in into the context of what's happening. Because reading the Bible is kind of like listening into an old conversation, an ancient one, and we're just kind of eavesdropping. Until you really know what's going on, it's hard to formulate an opinion or even have um, an informed idea about what's going on. Otherwise, you'd just be reading what you read and just deciding what you think it means. And so, uh, before we dig into the passage, we're going to look into the city of Corinth. See, the city of Corinth is one of the richest cities of its time. Uh, it was a port city, and so commerce uh, made any city really uh, rich because uh, that's where trade happens, and that's where other, uh, other countries and other goods and services would be uh, exchanged. And, and really, because of that, uh, worship being a normative part of ancient life, uh, the city of Corinth was home to many religions. Um, so much so that it actually had its own saying, kind of similar to Vegas. You know how some people say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Well, the city of Corinth had their own saying. It was called the Corinthiatsomai. That's a good Greek word. I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> the city of Corinth was known for uh, sexual immorality. That this saying actually it was to literally uh, just agree that in Corinth the people there they live in Corinthian sexual immorality that's what the saying says the way the Corinthian church was functioning was distinctly different than the rest of the religions that were in existence you know following Christ is not about uh, pleasing the flesh and so the church that was in that city they were persecuted. And so when Paul wrote this letter, uh, Paul was very mindful that they were experiencing turbulent times. And so uh, just like any pastor, he had words of encouragement and also a prescription of what they should be doing. And so before we get to the 16th verse of chapter 4, the beginning of, of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 actually begins with Paul talking about how he did not give them a seductive gospel. Now, I know the actual word isn't actually seductive, but the reason why I use that phrase is because in that time, philosophy and Stoicism was the main uh, philosophy of the day, and the best the best orators were usually celebrated. Those who are great at speaking, great at, at displaying their logic and their intellect, they were usually the ones that, that got heard and they were celebrated and followed. And so Paul was very, was very strategic in saying that the gospel of Jesus Christ that I, I was saying to you is not that. It's not this seductive gospel. It's not, I didn't fool you. This isn't about tricking you into following Jesus. And that's why he even actually says this interesting phrase before the break of, of the beginning of the chapter. He says this phrase about seeing the face of Christ. We're going to park that for later, but... Um, just because I think it's a significant phrase for him to say. 
And then he moves on after talking about uh, that, and he starts talking about jars. <laughs> now, in ancient culture, jars are kind of, they're just normal things. But Corinth particularly was known for having uh, elaborate jars, and the kind of jars that have beautiful de decor. And so Paul actually speaking about jars of clay was it's, it's like talking about the plainest of the plain of the mundane regular thing that everyone has. And yet he says that we have this treasure in jars of clay. Now the church at that time would have found that provocative because a simple clay jar is not exactly something you call a treasure. And then after that, Paul goes off uh, into a phrase that's actually well known in 90s worship songs. My man Daryl Evans made a big hit called Trading My Sorrows. <laughs> so Paul goes on and says, we are pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. And it's almost like Paul was giving a rah-rah speech, trying to encourage them, like, all is not lost. Whatever hardship we're going through, it's not the end. Indulge me if you will. I will recite it off by heart. The NIV version. We're reading the NIV version because it's the one that I memorized and the one that, that I remember the most. So here we go. So then Paul says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles achieve for us a glory that far surpasses them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. The word of the Lord. So Paul says that at the end of chapter 4, like a prescription. But not just any prescription. There is an elegant simplicity to it. It's kind of a, one of those things that even if you didn't even know the context of what was going on, someone said that to you there's something provocative about that passage Paul was giving them a pep talk that we can't give in to despair now earlier I talked about how I have a personal stake in this passage and I remember um, my early years as a Christian was was not rosy I was a troubled young man and had a lot of uh, a lot of issues. I was uh, going through a lot of personal issues at home, but, but mostly I found myself hanging out with the wrong kind of crowd to the point where I was kind of getting in trouble with the law. So coming to Christ was uh, complicated for me. It was beautiful because it meant that my life was changing from the inside out which is a bit perplexing to a lot of people because in our culture, our theory of change usually is, you know, when we, if we have a, a good environment around us, then it's easier to do good. But in my particular case, I didn't live in a great environment. And so this idea of, of Jesus on the inside and God changing me from the inside out was incredibly powerful. And this was one of the passages that I memorized and said again and again and again and again because it was a rocky road for me to now live this Christian identity, this Christian life. What Paul was prescribing to them wasn't something that he was just saying just for them. I have a suspicion that Paul himself would say this to himself, that his, this was a revelation for himself that he also was living. You see, before Paul became this great man of God that was a leader in the church, he was the persecutor of the church. 
In fact, the first time he met Jesus was because he was walking down the road of Damascus. It's in Acts chapter 9. Paul was walking down the road and, and Jesus showed up and said to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And the way that story goes is Paul actually, after that conversation, loses his vision. And scripture is kind of silent on what happens after that. All we know is that Paul was blind and Ananias was told that, that uh, he needed to heal Paul. But in that time of the in-between, there's not a lot that's said in the book of Acts about what was going on in Paul. All we know is that he was blind, and the last person he saw was Jesus Christ himself. I have a feeling that this passage that we read is a bit of a window of what was going on in, in Paul's mind. That all of a sudden, his physical capacity to see was incredibly impeded. But because he saw Jesus Christ himself, he was now seeing the world through new eyes. Now that is a powerful truth. You know, because we live in a world that likes to measure things simply about what can be seen. And it what makes a life of faith complicated because like the book of Hebrews says faith is having confidence in things that you don't see and so to Paul when you're having this conflict where you have this faith in God and yet you're suffering it kind of clarifies something about the Christian experience one, that following Jesus isn't get out of jail free card from suffering. This isn't a vending machine faith. Just because you come to faith in Jesus Christ does not mean that suffering all, all of a sudden goes away. It simply means that suffering now has no meaning. You know, a lot of people kind of equate suffering to sinfulness, which is a bit odd. Jesus spoke clearly about how that's not necessarily true. And yet, it's an ideology that's believed. One of my favorite authors is this guy, Jacques Ellul. And he actually says that part of the reason why this happened is a, a simple mistranslation in the Apostles' Creed. That instead of uh, a period, there was a comma. When it says uh, that Jesus suffered and died under Pontius Pilate. He's suggesting that the way it should be translated should be Jesus suffered, sorry, Jesus suffered, period. And under Pontius Pilate he died. And what he's suggesting is that that small, that small miss could actually make Christians just gloss over the fact that Jesus suffered. And that means that if we are to follow Jesus and be followers of Christ, that we too will suffer. The difference is that when Christians suffer, we have a different hope. So Paul says, fix your eyes on Jesus practically. And as I was simmering in this, I was actually brought back to think of this old hymn called, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. So as we close, I'm just going to quickly sing this song, and we close in prayer. And I hope that this passage is a reminder that no matter how hard life gets, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Let's sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things 
things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his mercy and grace. And incredibly important to remember in this pandemic life where the world is suffering and all of us in different shape or form are going through our own trials. So Lord, we heed the Apostle Paul's words. Turn our eyes on you to fix our eyes on things unseen for life with you is the eternal life thank you Jesus thank you so much for that message um, Reverend EJ. <laughs> um, that was so good. We're going to prepare for communion. Um, so if you want to just take time to grab the elements, I'm going to give you a little bit to do that. Just grab the communion elements. If you want to support um, EJ's ministry, you can actually go to the POC's website for Missions Canada and look him up and support him there for what he's doing in Toronto. Wow. Hallelujah. So I'm trusting that now you have your bread and your wa your um, whatever drink it is ready. And we're just going to start communion. Hallelujah. Would you just grab the bread with us? So Jesus gave it to the disciples and said, take eat, this is my body. And um, the significance of this, I always like to break the bread. And if you would do it with me, just break the bread. And we remember as we take the communion, we remember the suffering that Jesus endured on the cross physically in his body. We remember that his stripes, by his stripes, that we are actually, that we are healed. But I love what uh, EJ said about just the suffering of Christ as you take this and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on his body the on his body the sacrifice of Jesus we too get to participate in this communion communing with Jesus remembering his suffering and die to ourselves willing to suffer for the gospel, willing to suffer for Jesus. And we thank him for this new body that we will get. We thank him for just the healing that happens through this communion. I really believe that this is more than just bread, but I believe that there is healing power in the communion. There is healing power in the body of Jesus, in the bread. So as you take this, I just want you to proclaim that by his stripes you are healed, you are forgiven, you are free, there is no bondage. By his stripes you are healed. Or if you read in another passage, you were healed. So as you take this bread, let's just claim our healing, claim our forgiveness, and our um, just our newness. Amen. Now we're going to grab our drink, the blood of Jesus. Oh, man. Worship was so powerful today, wasn't it? It was so powerful. And I just can't get the words out of my head about the bondage that is no longer ours. We're free through Jesus. It says in the word that he was, no, he was not pleased by any other sacrifices. By this blood, we are forgiven, we are made new, we are righteous, we are set free. And by this blood, we have access to the Father. And now we get a relationship with God that he always wanted us to have. 
So I just want, I just believe that God wants you to take this free because this, that's what it represents. And I don't want you to take this in vain this morning, but would you just look at this? And let's just take a moment. If there's chains that are holding you down, I'm just going to proclaim freedom. And I, I just pray that wherever you are, you surrender those chains to God because he wants to break it. He wants to free you. He wants you to be free in him because he died for it. So we're just going to take a moment. I'm going to pray over you, and then we're going to take um, the blood. Hallelujah, God. I thank you that you are breaking chains right now in this moment, oh God. You are breaking religion, tradition. You are breaking um, just anything, oh Lord, that is holding people back from you, oh God. Any barrier, oh Lord, is no longer a barrier through Christ. And now we are set free. We are made apart. We are new. And anything that happened before we accepted you is no longer who we are, oh God. Our new identity is in Christ, and we are set free in the name of Jesus by this blood, oh God. We are, we are forgiven. So would you just help each and every one of them know that they are forgiven, they are made new, they are righteous. If you need to take a moment just to repent for anything, do it right now and don't wait and just give it to God. Thank you, Jesus. And now he washes you as white as snow. Take the blood or the grape juice. Um, now we're going to get into offering. What better way to get into offering than communion, really? Jesus offered his own life, and we too offer our own life for Christ. So with that, we offer everything. And we were just teaching our summer students this, but when you give your life to Christ, you don't just give 10%. You give everything. Meaning, if God wants you to give a certain amount, you give it to you, because give it to him, because it's not your own anymore. Your money's not your own. Your life's not your own. Your time's not your own. Nothing is yours anymore. So we're just going to pray, and as you have offered yourself to Christ, just give your money to him in terms of how much he wants you to give. So just ask him for a number and just be obedient to that. And it's not, it's not uh, you have to, it's uh, you want to because it's not yours. So let's pray. God, I just pray for this offering as they give, O oh Lord, to you. I just pray for us to just be willing, O oh Lord, to give whatever you ask and be led by your spirit, O oh Lord. Offering doesn't have to be just a part of church. It's just part of our lives as Christians. We offer whatever you want because our life isn't our own anymore. Amen. If you want to give to the church, the email is info at christforlife.ca, and you can e-transfer there. If you want to do a check and email it, the address is 3607 Wolfdale Road, Mississauga, Ontario, L5C1V8. If you want a curbside pickup or um, you want to drop off, just call us or email us using our number, which is 905-566-1208, or email us to info at christforlife.ca, and we can make arrangements for that. If you want to donate to the food bank, the email is info at goodmeasurefoodbank.com. Hallelujah. Beautiful. <clears throat> that was a powerful one, powerful, powerful message. One thing that really struck me while I was listening to EJ and something really struck me about uh, Paul when he lost the vision. You know, he had a vision before. It's a worldly vision. It's about persecuting Christians. Now he had a new vision of pursuing Christ. What about that? You know, when you, uh, when you have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, you will have a new vision. He had a vision of Jesus, which is really so beautiful and powerful. Thanks, uh, 
her pastor EJ and Cheryl and Gemma, beautiful Gemma. We're so glad that you were able to join us today and uh, we have a few announcements. And Tuesday, uh, well, uh, we're, we're not doing 6 a.m. anymore, the prayer and fasting Tuesday. We're not doing Tuesday uh, 6 a.m. We'll be sticking to 7, 7 p.m., okay? We're sticking to 7 p.m., all right? And then there's Thursday, uh, Women's Intercessory at 7 p.m. Women's Intercessory, 7 p.m. Then we have uh, Friday Youth at 4 p.m. And also uh, we have uh, Journey with Jesus. You know, something I want to share with you about Journey. You know, Journey begins when you, when you uh, commit yourself, your heart to Jesus. You know, just like going out, out of Egypt. And then you go to uh, the wilderness, and then you encounter, you know, some challenges. But you, ne you need to get to the pro you need to get to the Mount Sinai, you know, where you will your relationship, your covenant relationship. Yeah, you will receive it from the Lord. Something like uh, you be empowered with the Word of God, and you will get this. Uh, you, the journey begins when you accept Jesus. The journey continues. All right, we have Fridays, the journey continues, you know, journey with Jesus. You know, like Friday at uh, 6.30 uh, p.m., 6.30 p.m., we have journey with Jesus. The, your journey after receiving Christ has to continue, okay? And then your journey with Jesus later on will be rewarded. So, you know, don't stop when you're out of Egypt, especially when you are in the wilderness, especially when you get... To, the, to Mount Sinai, especially when you get, you know, when you get to the Word of God, the covenant, remember? Then you get to the Jordan, Jordan River. Hey, don't stop there at the Jordan until you see it's, part, it's parted. Don't stop until you get to the promised land because there, there will be seven powerful nations, all right? Even in the promised land, there will be some challenges, all right? Journey begins. Journey continues and journey will be rewarded. And don't stop until we see Jesus face to face. Amen? And also, uh, if you need food, uh, food bank is open. Uh, just make an appointment. Appointment, okay? Uh, e email us at info at christforlife.ca. Okay? Info at christforlife.ca. We love you and let's pray. Father, we want to thank you. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, O oh Lord God, to feast at your word. It's a beautiful day to worship you. Thank you, Lord God, for that powerful worship. Lord God, we, ha we enjoyed your powerful presence. Truly, we need your presence at this time of uh, pressures. There's so much pressures. There's so much challenges ahead of us. Even, even these trying times that we are uh, encountering, Lord God. And we pray, Father God, for the freedom in the spirit of God. We pray, oh God, that every, every, every single one of us will encounter the living Christ. Every single one of us, will, oh God, will be empowered by your spirit. Lord God, we need more fire. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit keep on a blazing, keep on blazing inside of our hearts, oh God, that we will continue to serve Christ, Lord God, to enjoy his presence and to be filled, to be led by his spirit. And we want to thank you today, Father God. Go before us. Lord God, bless everything we do, everything we plan, places we go, people we meet, and help us, oh God, to please you all the time and let your presence go before us and fight our battles. Lord God, we bring back all the glory, the honor, and the highest praise, the highest praise that is due only to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and His name is Jesus, and all the people of God said, Amen and Amen. God bless you all. Have a nice weekend. Stay safe. God bless you.